So that way everybody knows at six o'clock, we want to keep your daughter, Angel, in prayer, Jimmy's daughter, uh, Jasmine, in prayer, Arkansas Police Activity and his family member in prayer, uh, just to name three. Uh, Sister Lisa, still keep her in prayer. She's still in that mode where she's up and down over losing her daddy. You've got, um, a, uh, what is her name? Maria Betty. Maria Betty and then uh, Mary Zorian. We've got Grandma Wolf from our uh, Arkansas Police Activity and NST family. Um, Isaac, if he doesn't make it, we've got to keep him in prayer. Uh, think independently, um, Mike, keep him in prayer. Um, Brother Eric from Twitter, he's been battling a lot of demons in his life. Keep him in prayer. Uh, Snake Eyes Rebel, I know his real name. I'm just not allowed to say it out loud. Um, keep him in prayer. He's battling things that we are not, we can't express, but we just want to keep them guys in prayer, okay? Okay. And if you've got people to add, go ahead and add it. <clears throat> I pray for all of us on a spiritual battle that we're dealing with in the spiritual realm and with people in person contact. Yep. Well, you got your brother, Andrew, right? Yeah. And then your dad? Yes. What is his first name? Um, my dad's first name is Daryl. And... Daryl, that's the one I couldn't remember. See, I got to remember that one. So he has been a lot nicer since I came back from my getaway trip. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. praise God, though, sis, that you were able to get away for a little bit, and he's been able to calm down. You know. Yeah, because I don't like it when he gets mad like that. Well, oh, de the demon of addiction is, is hell. And it is. Once you've invited that demon in it, it's harder to break it free from it. Mm-hmm. And so I know I'm 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 still recovery. I still every day think about what I used to do is how that made me feel and everything else. It's like I would escape. And that's what a lot of people do is they drink to escape life. And it's no excuse. Don't get me wrong. It's not an no. excuse. Because it leads you down paths you don't want to go down. It destroys people. It destroys families. And, and, that's, and that's something I can speak of on firsthand experience. I've witnessed it and I've seen it in my own life. And if it wasn't for Crystal, I'd still be in that lifestyle. And Sometimes so his demons tell me that I should die or something, you know. Oh, yeah. Or why do I exist? Yeah, that's Satan. That's it's Satan. upsetting. And it comes yep. from my dad when he's that angry. Yes. But yeah, we just, you know, and that's something that, you know, the serenity prayer is a simple prayer, but it's not as effective as facing these demons in faith. I mean, we can all, we've all heard that prayer. God grant yeah. me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference in Jesus' name. Amen. But that's not enough. <clears throat> like with me with addiction, and I know this is how I did it. Take this from me, God. I don't want it anymore. Give me the strength to resist this. Give me the courage to face these demons head on and tell them to go to hell. You know, literally becoming yeah. personal with God on that level. That's what matters. And a lot of people don't know how to become personal with God. You know, they think that it's got to be a certain way to pray or they're taught that there's only one way to pray. And I, I don't do blame. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I do blame the Catholic religion background, too, because that could also be a bondage trap Yeah, well, he's also set in. Yeah, it is. It is. Religion is, is demonic when it comes in that sense that everybody wants to be in a ritual. 
that this ritual is going to get you to heaven. There is not a ritual on this earth that's going to buy your way into heaven. The only thing that's going to buy you to get you into heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ. But even non-Catholic, I'm talking Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Pentecostals, Baptists, they all have rituals that they pick and choose that they want you to follow. And when you divide God's house, you destroy God's house, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have made my dad mad speaking out the truth about priests. Yeah. He, he said that I should be ashamed of myself to talk poorly on um, high holy people like that. <laughs> and I said, no, they're not. They're just deceiving us from the truth. Yep. We have our own personal relationship and walk with God. We don't need them. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And, and this is why we always, before we open in prayer, have these talks. To, so we can uh, fellowship a little bit. But um, well, like the Pharisees said, they said they told they said only God can forgive sins when they accused Jesus of blasphemy. Yeah. Boom. Right there, Jimmy. Right there. Because uh, I, I mean, I'm like the Pharisees only me. said only God can forgive sins. You know, one hundred percent. Um, but then, then uh, I like to re refer people to John one one. That still say that to this day. Only God can forgive me my sins. No, Jesus forgives you of your sins by His blood. Well, no, He don't. I says, Oh yeah, He does. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I get them, and they go, Well, Jesus ain't God. And I says, Oh really? Refer to John one one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. They don't know how to respond to that one. <laughs> yeah, because Jesus is the middle between man and God because God hates sin with everything in him. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Jesus also said in the Bible, I and my father are one. Mm hmm. So are they one and the same? Yes. And so people don't realize that Jesus did step down to earth as the virgin birth, as an innocent man, to be the ultimate payment for whose sin? Our sin. Ours. Yeah. No, never pay him and there's nothing we can ever do to repay him, like Crystal just said. So, <clears throat> but well, let's go ahead and bow our heads, guys, and we'll go ahead and uh, begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this meeting tonight, O oh Lord. Lord, anoint the ears of the hearer. Anoint the lips of the speakers. Lord, anoint our souls, our spirits, and our minds, O oh God, that we hear your words, not the person's teaching, but your words and what you would have us learn, O oh God. We lift up our these children, O oh God, to learn to accept Christ for who he is, like Jasmine, little angel, Andrew. Lord, we lift up these that are cursed by these demons of addiction, Lord, like Daryl and others. Lord, we lift up Snake Eyes. We lift up Chris. And we lift up Arkansas Police Activity tonight. Grandma Wolf, Debbie, Isaac tonight, oh God. Eric, Lord, there's so many battling, so many demons. Give them strength and courage. We lift up our brothers and sisters who are battling the loss of loved ones, like Sister Lisa, Maria. Betty, Lord, you know, that is a great sorrow right now for them. Give them strength. Even Chris, he's lost a loved one. Give him strength, oh God. And give him peace that passes all understanding. We ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> but we're going to continue here in Job 27. I believe that's where we left off. Wasn't it, Jimmy? I believe so. Yeah, because I believe the one before at 26, I believe, was Job reproving Bildad again. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we left off. Hmm. So, as we get here to Job 27, we're going to go ahead and begin our reading. Are you ready, Sister Bonita? Yes, I'm already there. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I know Jimmy's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, 
and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast, and I will and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. Wow. As we continue here. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? Ooh, that's powerful. Ooh. I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty. Will I not conceal? Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Wow. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though we heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth this house as a moth, and as a booth that keep that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall be not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth. And a storm hurleth him out of his place. For God shall cast upon him and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. We read this last week. This is the one we left off on. Okay. Yeah, this is where we left off. Remember Job's re rebuttal and his protesting his sincerity? But it's good to re really read this one as a starter for tonight. Because he's calling out Bildad. Uh, I know I just said all the names so far, and I can't think of the third one. Um, uh, Eliezer? Eliezer or something like that, yes. Um, But he's calling them out for their vanity their self-righteousness. And he's telling him, I haven't been wiped out yet. I have not fallen short. I haven't stepped out of God's will. And I'm going to still teach you while I'm suffering. Do you catch that example of teaching while suffering that Job is doing through this all? I don't know if you guys caught that or not, how Job is teaching while he's suffering medically. So let's go over to 28. Here we go. Now, this is a powerful one here. Job 28. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up as if it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphire, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. 
Do we catch this here, guys? <clears throat> that everything that's on this earth is that Job knows that everything is designed by God. Everything has its place, right? Yes. In nature. This is what Job is saying here. Everything has a balance. Only God can allow that balance to be changed, right? Yes. So this is what Job's talking about here is that balance of life. But then I like what Job continues to say here next. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. The death saith, it is not in me. And the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of the Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. <clears throat> the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Why is he saying, before we continue in the, in the next chunk of verses, why is he saying that wisdom is invaluable and priceless? What do you guys think that he means by that? You can only attain wisdom through God. You can't buy it. Yeah. Because isn't wisdom a spiritual knowledge of things? Yes. Yeah. Wisdom is a spiritual science. It's a gift. And, you know, Benita, I'm seeing you grow in wisdom. And that comes yeah, from I'm, God. I see Jimmy growing in God's wisdom. It's I'm not the same. <laughs> and nor am I. And, you know, and that's the thing that people have to know. This is why Proverbs 1, 7 and Job 28, 12 are an exact comparison. Because the fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? Yes. But fools despise what? Wisdom and instruction. So here you're seeing Job clearly say to it again, hey, wisdom is not something you can, is not something physical that you can get a hold of. It's not something that's physical that you can buy it with anything on this earth. Wisdom comes alone from God, like Jimmy just said. And so Job is saying the same thing. That there is no money or no man-made thing on this earth that you could use to buy wisdom. Wisdom is given to you by God. And I love that, that Job touched on this. Now, if we look here at 20, whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Isn't that what I just said about Proverbs 1 7? Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. And no, I did not pre read this, Jimmy. <laughs> But this is what we were talking about, wasn't it, Bonita? Yes. I got wisdom. Angel to join. Hi, little angel. God bless you. Hi. My mom is making me do the Bible study with her. And that's a good thing. 
You want to yeah. give mom a hug for that. <laughs> I would like to do it with you because it. Ooh, I got a pin. No, that's the one I lost. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's good for you to learn, Angel. And what we're teaching yeah. here is the basics of God. Okay. So what you're learning here is that without fear of God, there is no wisdom, right? Yep. So right here, he says, unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And depart from evil is understanding. So without wisdom, we don't know what's good or bad, do we? Nope. So, <laughs> so this is where we're at, okay? Oh, yeah. And always tell your mom to ask me questions for you, okay? Yeah, okay. Because she will always message me and, and ask me extra questions. I do. <laughs> okay. I like Even Sister Crystal, too. I ask yep. you, too, now. Praise I God. also <laughs> liked it, that song, What You Tell My Mom To Play. That one was my favorite. Oh, Which one? Yeah. Underdog? Yeah. The rock song? Underdog. <laughs> yep. Amen. It's a good one. It's, it's, it says it all. <laughs> but let's there go it ahead. does. Yeah, let's go ahead and go over to Job 29. Yep. So we're going to be right here. Moreover, Job continued his oh. parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. When I went out the gate, out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none, to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. We're going we're gonna to touch this for a minute before we go to the next paragraph. Because Job spoke some volumes here. Do you see how much respect Job had? How much people respected Job before he got sick and all this travesty occurred? Yes. Yes. Okay. A diadem. Does anybody know what a royal diadem is? No. No. Like a banner. A banner. If I'm right, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to remember it here. Let me pull it up. I don't okay. know if you can. Yeah, I believe it's a banner. Let me, let me pull up the word diadem. It ain't. If I could spell, I'd be a millionaire. Diadem is D I A D E M. Yeah, it's a jeweled crown or a headband worn as a symbol of sovereignty. A oh, okay. Yeah, I was right. It's a banner. It's a form of a banner. So it's like a crown. So he had a royal diadem or a crown or a banner above him. And so these people seen him and they immediately shut up and stood up. You know, that speaks volumes when even princes and royalty would stop speaking just to hear what you had to say. Job is talking about how powerful he was before all this happened. And that's what a lot of people don't catch. And what, what did Job say he did? 
he said, what here? Let's see. He said, because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing on him that was ready to perish came upon me and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. But here's some rules to live by, guys, right here in verse 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem, a banner. I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Don't we do that with the word of God when we're teaching and we, we're sharing scripture, guys? Yes. Yes. Isn't that something to live by? Wow. Yes. Even in Job's suffering, he teaches us how to live. Now, as we continue, then I said, I shall die in my nest and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters. And the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto mean men gave ear and waited, and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. I laughed on them, they believed it not. And the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way and sat chief and dwelt as a king in the army as one that comforteth the mourners. You see how Job is still defending his position in God yeah. to, to his friends? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Job is having to defend himself. He's already been struck ill with leprosy and boils, right? Yeah. He's yeah. lost his family. He's lost his wealth. But has he cursed God? No. No. Not at all. Oh. How many of us would for a moment be like, why are you doing this to me, God? How dare you? We still wouldn't curse God. No. Nope. We'd ask God. No. What's the lesson? And those of us that drive, when our car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and you have nobody to call, bang your steering. Why is this happening to me? <laughs> We've all done it. That have had vehicles in our life. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But see, we yeah. don't, but we never question God. We just wonder why it happens. And people will mistake us doing that, banging on the steering wheel, jumping up and down being mad about it as us questioning God. This is the same thing that Job was going through back then, guys. So as we continue here in 30, but now that they are younger than I, but now that, no, I can't talk. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, whereto might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For wanton fame they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former times, desolate and waste, who cut up mollows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed. Under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And now I'm their song. Yea, I'm their byword. The youth, they push away my feet, and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. They mar my path. They set forward my calamity. They have no helper. They came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters. In the desolation, they rolled themselves upon me. You see, he is describing exactly what happened when his children and his livestock had gotten taken away, right? Yes. This is exactly the enemies of his household 
just swooped upon him like a flood and just took everything. Because Satan was allowed to test Job. Now, I've got a question to ask you guys. If God allowed Satan to test Job, how much more will Satan test us? A lot. A lot. Exactly. Job is describing this perfectly right here in 30 of what they did to them. And he's going to continue here in chapter 30 and verse 15. Terrors are turned upon me. They pursue my soul as the wind and my welfare passes away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in the night season and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me. With thy strong hand thou opposest thyself against me. Thou liftest me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, and do the house appointed for all living. Howbeit he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry in his destruction. Did I not weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I wanted, waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled, and I rested not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up, and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with the heat. With heat. My heart also is turned to mourning, and my organ into the voice of them that weep. Do you see how Job is describing his failing health? Yeah. yeah. But see, a lot of people would still assume Job was cursing God. By saying that God is the one oppressing him. He's not. Mm -mm. He's explaining how it appears to him. How God's not lit hearing him at this point. And it was said once before. He, sometimes the teacher is silent during a test. Isn't this what Job's going through now? God's not answering him, is he? No. No. Because God's allowing him to be tested. And this is why Job is explaining his suffering. But a lot of people will say, oh, you're cursing God. You're just, you're not holding what you spoke of. Uh, you're you're not teaching, you're not talking, you're teaching contrary to what you taught before. You must have some kind of hidden sin. This is not it at all. This is Job crying out in anguish and in pain. He wants us to feel what he's feeling in his soul right now. Amen. You know what we call that, Sister Benita? I'm trying to think of which word. There's two I've words we can use. Too much popping in my brain. <laughs> Empathy and compassion. Two main ingredients in mercy is empathy and compassion. But my question is, how do you receive the gift of empathy and compassion if you have never known it? That's a good question for y'all to answer. That is. Yep. That is. Do you pro I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of put the youngster on the spot here. <laughs> I'm gonna put little angel on the spot here. Okay. Okay, angel. Okay. What? In John 316. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, I believe, goes for God sent not a son into the world to condemn them, but through the world might be saved. Through him might the world be saved. It's probably not accurate, but if you look at John 3, 16 through 21. Okay. So I'm looking. Where just... does empathy and compassion start? Who's that person I was just talking about? I got her on this one, Jimmy. <laughs> She's looking at me to what? hopefully tell her. What page again? John, it's John chapter three. All right, chapter three, John. Yep, John chapter three, New Testament. John. I love this part of the study right here. <laughs> My battle book is falling apart here. I found it faster than you did, Angel. Okay. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it was 16, 17. It's what I just wrote. What I just spoke about. Now, I'm going to read it again, okay? Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Who am I talking about there? Um... First with the J. John. No. Oh. You got to think about it. Who who died on the cross for our sins? Jesus. Yes. So where does empathy and compassion begin? Jesus. Yep. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Only Jesus gave us empathy and compassion. Yep. Because he turned it from a spiritual to a physical. Mm -hmm. I thought you would like that part, Benita. Yep. Yes, that was awesome. I knew I was going to challenge her on that one. <laughs> but yes, uh, this is what Job was talking about here is empathy and compassion. Yep. Even in suffering, he was still talking about empathy and compassion. Yep. He's but my question say. is, do you think uh, Elazar... Uh, Bildad and Zophar had any empathy and compassion in the no. way addressed to Job? Oh. No. Not no, at all, no, right? No, ever. So, no. Job, and this is where Job is crying out, even in my illness, I still have empathy and compassion for everyone. Right? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so now we get here to 31. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why, why then why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Yeah. Ooh. Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity or if my foot hasted to deceive? Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. If my step hath turned out of the way and my heart walked after mine eyes, and if any blot hath cleaved to mine hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if it if I have laid at Excuse me, I'm getting losing my tongue here. Uh -huh. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down upon her. For this is an heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. 
for it is a fire that consumeth to destruction and would root out all mine increase. If I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God rises up and when he visiteth? What shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? See, Job is asking. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys to define integrity real quick. What is your opinion of, of what it means to have integrity? To have respect for yourself and for others. Even when? When things seem unfair or... Mm -hmm. There's another word I wanted to say. Well, Jesus, a... Jesus did but... define integrity. And he did it in a way that people don't realize it. And... The simple way to do it, but you're right. Having respect for others, even though they don't give it to you. That is part of integrity, Bonita. It's perfect. So there's not a wrong answer there on that one. But integrity is doing what is right when no one's watching. Right? Yes. So physically, no one was watching, but who sees everything? Who knows everything? God. Jesus and God. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's when we talk about integrity of doing what is right when no one's watching. They're talking about the physical people watching. Because spiritually, God is always watching. Yep. And so that's where your part is, a, is an ex excellent, ex yeah, I can't even talk. excellent example of integrity, Benita. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard because I do it at work all the time. Well, we both After, battle that at work. <laughs> yep, because dealing with grumpy electricians, they're very rude a lot of times. Yep. So then I have to say, well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to help you. Oh, yeah. And I'm sorry that it's not happening as fast because I'm helping somebody else. Yep. Yeah. But see, that's integrity. I will definitely get to you as soon as I can possibly get to you. Right yep. Bear with me. And, you know, and it's not getting mad back at him. No. Because if you return evil for evil, it's going to become more evil. Yep, it becomes like where you're pouring more gasoline into the fire and it gets bigger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's something I'm learning, too, as I'm getting older. So, because <laughs> I, I don't pour gasoline. I try to throw dy dynamite on a bonfire sometimes <laughs> because of my temper. And I'm guilty of it, and I'd be a fool to say I wasn't, you know? Me too, I'm guilty for that. So, yeah, I don't throw gasoline on ga on a bonfire. I throw bombs on a bonfire. So Yeah, I agree, especially if they're um, so picking on others that seem weak than them. Yeah. And that's not cool at all. No, we've got to learn to use truth over anger. Yep. And we all got to do it. And that's not, there's not one person guilt, not guilty of that. So if I can be an example, I'll make myself the example that I've fallen short for that same very reason. And because when somebody pushes you to the point where you physically cannot remove yourself, you're going to file back. But Jesus, he did the greatest example of that when he flipped the tables and created whips that he had enough of it. And he booted them right out. He drove them out of that out of God's temple. So, is it okay to be angry? Yes. But is it yes. okay to have hate in that anger? No. No. So there's a difference between anger and hate. So we're not supposed to hate the enemy, but love the nope. enemy. Can we be angry for what they did? Yes. Do we have to sit there and take their evil? No. No. We, no. we can remove ourselves from it. Guilty of it not removing myself sometimes. I've done it. So people wonder why I leave sometimes when I'm frustrated and pick on something else at work to do. <laughs> and that's why, because you don't want to be sinful. You want to be angry. Yes, you're angry. So you're going to remove mm -hmm. yourself so you don't fall short. Yep. Great example. Kind of got you silent back there, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm listening. 
some good points here we're making. But see, and that's where we see Job here doing what he's doing. And as we continue here, let's look right here. If I have withheld from the poor their desire, or have caused the widow, the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel myself alone, and the fatherless have not eaten thereof. For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father. And I have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and if he were not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw my help in the gate, then let mine arm fall from my shoulder blade, and my arm be broken from the bone, for destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. Do you see how Job is describing his want to always do good even in struggle? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of people won't catch these little nuances in here. How Job's describing. I'd rather have my arm fall off than to take something from a poor person. Sorry. I'd rather have my yeah. ear fall off and my nose fall off before I eat something before somebody that's been starving for a week eats. Yep. That is the example we have in Job that people don't see. So was Job cursing God or was he just speaking his heart? His speak in his heart. Yeah. But a lot of his friends, as we all see, will still accuse him of being a hypocrite. As Isaac said, fair weather friends. <laughs> Hi, bud. Smokey's right over here behind me. <laughs> wanting a pet. <laughs> So that's what it was. I was saying hi to Smokey. If I, or we go here to 24. If I have made my gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, thou art my confidence. If I rejoice because my wealth was great, and because my hand had gotten much. If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart has secretly enticed, or my mouth has kissed my hand. This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hateth me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. If the men of my tabernacle said not, oh, that we had of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. Doesn't that sound like the Good Samaritan? Yes. Yes. Uh, Jimmy, you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? When the guy yeah. fell on the ditch and got robbed within an inch of his life? Job was living the Good Samaritan life, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But he says, I wish to be cut off from God if I ever did this for my own glory. And it's a great example, guys. Of how Job says, I'd rather my arm be fall off, my nose fall off, my eyes, my hands, my feet. Well, that's crazy, isn't it? That even in his sickness, he's professing his love for God and his obedience to God. Wow. Here we go. Now we're going to continue here. If I, as soon as I unlock my mouse. My mouse went to sleep on me. <laughs> if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding mine iniquity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence and went not out of the door? Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. I would declare unto him the number of my steps as a prince would I go near unto him. If my land cry against me or that the furrows likewise thereof complain, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, let thistles grow instead of wheat and cockle instead of barley. 
the words of Job are ended. Wow. You guys catch that, didn't you? That this chapter, Job 31, is him talking about his innocence and his maintaining his integrity. Even in sickness, he maintained his integrity. Do you have any questions before we move forward? Benita, uh, Jimmy. Wow. It just makes me think when I feel very sick, I don't want other people to feel that way. Yeah. That's how I can explain it. Yeah. Even even when you were struggling, you still tried to help others, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't think about myself when I was doing it. I just mm -hmm. did it because I knew when I needed help, Um, I wish somebody did it for me. Exactly. Exactly. This is the integrity that Job had. And a lot of people don't realize that even in struggle, you're living like Job lived. It may not be that physical leprosy, but when the testing comes, do you turn your back on God or do you stand true to your saint, your creator? Stand true to creator, even if I have a migraine. Yeah, yeah stand true to God no matter what comes your way. Oh, it's Elihu. That's his name. I couldn't think of it, Jimmy. <laughs> there it is, Elihu. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and see what Elihu says here. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled because he just himself justified himself rather than God. Oh, this is an additional one coming after Job. Excuse me. I stand corrected. Elihu is a different one. But now, Elihu thinks that Job has justified himself over God. <laughs> oh, boy. Also against his three friends was, friends was his wrath kindled, because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not show you mine opinion. I said they should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the ages understand judgment. Therefore I said, hearken to me, I also will show mine opinion. So now we had the three fair weather friends. Now we have someone else, a youngster, coming after Job. <clears throat> Satan doesn't stop attacking, does he? No. No. He hates all that's good about us. That glorifies God. Yep. Now we're going to continue. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons. While she searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job. Or that answered his words. Lest you should say, we have found out wisdom. God thrusteth him down, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed, and they, they answered no more. They left off speaking. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, he. But he's continuing here. This is Elihu talking. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still, and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show mine opinion. For I am full of matter, the spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed, 
I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto men, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. Somebody's very proud and boastful, isn't he? Yeah. So let's go ahead and go to 38 tonight and we will we will read this here real quick. Elu, and I like the title that it gives it to the, the subject title that uh the software gives to Job 33, Jimmy. Yeah. Where it says right here, Elihu offers himself instead of God to reason with Job. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue has spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me. Stand up, behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid. Neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasion against me. He counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks. He marketh all my past. Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Okay, Jimmy. I know you understand this like I do. Isn't he, Elio call, El, Elihu actually calling Job a liar and a hypocrite and accusing Job of cursing God? Yeah. That's what it yeah. sounds like to me, don't it? Yeah. It, it, he is calling Job a liar and a hypocrite. And he's... Wow, he's even worse than Job's three friends, isn't he? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and um, continue. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with the pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life aboreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to shew unto a man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him and he shall see his face with joy. For he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Elihu is sitting here, High and mighty as a youngster, mm -hmm. calling Job a hypocrite and a liar and, and accusing God, uh, Job of cursing God and usurping authority over God, if I'm not mistaken here. Are you seeing that, Benita? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. The, the audacity of Elihu here. Wow. 
Let's look right here in 31. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. Wow. He is boastful and prideful, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Boy, he is so high and mighty in this one. I thought Job's friends were bad. But now we've got Elihu. <laughs> uh, he's heartless. Oh, he's very heartless. That's exactly right, sister. <clears throat> so we are going to actually leave 34 for our next study. Okay. Okay. I, think okay. I remember where I'm at now. Yeah, we're on Job 34. Uh, Sister Bonita, can you write that down that we are going to on Wednesday go into Job 34? Yes. I just I thought I thought Job's friends were bad. Now we have Elu doing it. And he's even putting himself in authority. Figure yep. he's boastful in pride. We don't want to be like Elu, do we? Nope. No. He has no remorse. He's he's more heartless than Job's friends. Yep. There is no compassion or empathy in, in Elihu at all. There's he has pride, a hard and hard. And There's envy, there's pride, there's malice. Yeah. Wow. We're learning a lot from Job, aren't we, guys? Yeah. Yes. Sister Bonita, can I pick on you tonight to close us in prayer? Yes. All righty, sister. Please do. Thank you, God, for having us come together in fellowship on our faith with you. Reading the book of Job is teaching us many lessons we deserve to know in your growth and the spiritual well-being of it all. And I'm grateful to have my um, Bible study family with me here all the time and i can't wait till the next one amen in amen. jesus mighty name and lord watch over us all even in the storms of life oh god lead us not into temptation but deliver us oh god teach us to seek your will and not our own oh god humble us in all your ways oh god lord bless our brothers and sisters and even our enemies in jesus mighty name amen Amen. Amen. Amen, guys. I love you guys. You guys have a good night. Love you. You do I too. love you all. Love you all. Bye. Bye. All right, good, good night. Evening, guys. You, buddy. night. Jimmy, I'll see you on good we'll night. You all on Wednesday night. Bye. Good night. Right. Good night, guys. It's good great night. to hear from you all. Yep, it's, it's good. great to hear everybody. God bless you guys. God, God bless. bless you.